Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our series on nuclear power and we're going to assemble a nuclear reactor inside a people playground. And no, I won't irradiate any people or any of these gores, I'm, I'm just not like that. <laughs> that being said, I have there have been nuclear accidents many times. So let's go ahead and do it. So what do we need here? So we're going to need a lot of components. We're going to need some kind of a containment building. We're going to need some kind of controls to monitor it. We're going to have some sort of way to uh, limit the reaction. We're going to have to do something as far as taking some of the energy and doing stuff with it. So let's go ahead and get building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff as my basic unit of size. Uh, the reason I like this, uh, this is a TBU fuel. This is basically a wasted, if you want to imagine, a nuclear waste essentially in a can. This stuff is very, very difficult to light, which is good because it's nice and safe when I do things like calculate how much space I'm going to need between different units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a stand-in from a reactor. I'm going to do a 3 by 3 reactor here, and I'm going to connect it to a turbine, like I said, with some instrumentation. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, though, is find a way to get my control rods in here. Now, the great thing is they give you control rods in this. So what the heck is a control rod? So a control rod is this. It is a boron control rod. It is basically a piece of metal with a bunch of boron in it. When neutrons smack into it, it goes brrr, and basically loses all of its energy, which means it can't talk to its neighbor and start criticality. The cool thing is you can actually move these things in order to increase or decrease the rate of reaction inside of your reactor by just manipulating them. So what we're going to do is use this as a way to kind of control that. And I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a woo, pause. Let's go ahead and make sure we wait for that one. That Why would that not settle flat? That doesn't make sense to me. Settle flat. There we go. So let's go ahead and get our reactor here. Like I said, I'm just estimating spaces. I'm not trying to do anything sophisticated. This is uh, this program. You can get you can make these pretty darn dense if you want to, but I'm actually going to intentionally leave space to make it a little bit safer. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab my entire setup here. We're going to lift it up a little bit off the ground, and we're going to go ahead and stick some stuff underneath it as well. So what I need is I can use heavy water, I can use graphite. I'm a huge fan of graphite. I don't know, I'm just old-fashioned when it comes to things like this. So graphite, as I can see, only takes up about half of that distance. So what I'll do is I'll take two of these graphites and use these as kind of my basic uh, reflectors that are going to be sitting down here at the bottom. So go ahead and uh, flatten that out right there like that. Go ahead and flatten that out there like that. Pause on pause. <laughs> Go ahead and grab my little placeholders. I'll go ahead and center them like that. And now, <laughs> I knew that I was going to do that. I don't know why I bother sometimes. So we have ourselves a nice little set of reflectors down here. So we're also going to build a wall of these kind of going up both. Don't worry about that little goofy angle there because um, we can correct that pretty quickly if we need to. Woo. There we go. Fix yourself, man. Straighten up. Sometimes my reactor is just, just not straight enough. Eh, I'll fix that later. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab a couple more graphite moderators. Bonk, bonk. Pause. We're going to go ahead and stick these on the outside. Again, I'm going to try to keep everything roughly square here. I don't want to be too, too much of anything. I, like I said, I'm going to keep this one sort of simple this time. Usually a common mistake I make is not making things like this simple. Freeze, 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 freeze. Delightful. So now those aren't going to go anywhere, which is pretty important because when this whole thing explodes at the end of the video, we probably want to make sure that those aren't going to be flicked around the world, kind of a thing like that. Freeze you guys too. If I unpause, nothing bad should happen. Good. So it looks like we need to go one more deck higher here. So I'll grab a couple more. Go ahead and stick this again. Like I said, keeping this pretty simple for today. I don't want to be, I can get sophisticated. I just don't feel the need to. All right, right click. We'll go ahead and freeze these guys in place too. Unpause. Sweet. So now we have our ability to go ahead and um, control it. We have our reflectors good to go. So now we're going to build our containment here. So uh, we have some lead plates that we can use for them. Uh, the lead plates are looking pretty good. I will use the easy lead plate method here. So go ahead and plop one, plop two, plop three, clunk. Go ahead and freeze time again. I'll go ahead and tweak them a little bit so they're a little bit more accurate there. Not that they need to be. Like I said, we're just going to freeze them anyway. Let's go ahead and move these guys. Uh, we're going to need quite a bit. Each one of these reduces radiation by 10, which is not a lot. So we'll go ahead and uh, do a couple layers of these guys. I'll do another one here. Like I said, this is not going to be the world's most sophisticated reactor. It's going to just work. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel very good, does it? All right, I'll go ahead and paste another one of those suckers. Again, this is our lead shielding in order to contain uh, all the nastiness we're about to create, but that's okay. Perfect. And let's go ahead and throw a concrete on the outside. Fortunately, the concrete is not going to be the right size. Oh, you suck. Go ahead and grab that. Rip. And we'll probably need two of those concretes in order to make that roughly okay here. That uh, looks pretty good. I'm not going to... Do not need to paint the cannonball here. This is a people playground. This is not the actual construction. You have to be a little more precise in the real world, I imagine. All right, let's grab these two. Freeze those. Grab these two. Freeze those as well. And now we have kind of our housing of our reactor here. It's, it's 
it, it's <laughs> and I'm not not I'm not not proud of it, but like it's it, it it's pretty ugly. So now we need to get some instrumentation here. So uh, instrumentation, there's only a couple different things I really need to know here. Uh, one thing I'd be very very interested in seeing is I'd be very curious to see what the temperature of you know kind of the core is, which is going to be in the middle. So let's grab ourselves some thermometers. Okay, that one looks pretty, <laughs> that's a little cold outside. So this is gonna represent our normal te temperature and this is gonna represent our ambient temperature. Now we need something to do with all the heat that we generate. So we'll go ahead and grab ourselves some turbines. We'll keep it simple. We'll do a very, very, very large turbine this time. Crunk. That should, <laughs> it disintegrated the concrete. <laughs> I don't know if I'm impressed or like annoyed. Like I'm a combination of both emotions right there. So let's go ahead and try again. This time, let's not run the giant turbine into itself so it blows up again, but that happens. All right, you're already frozen, so I'm not going to worry about you. All right, cool. So this is going to be our turbine. We'll go ahead and connect that to some instrumentation as well. We'll have a basic power meter. This power meter is going to be worthless. It only goes up to 1,000. You know, I've, you could generate in the millions, so that's not going to do us much. But what we could do is we could grab ourselves a particle accelerator and basically waste its power. I know you're like, What? So this little guy right here is pretty cool because it acts as a little bit of a power sink for us. Another power sink I like to use are things like lasers. The problem with a laser, though, is the laser is going to hit something that's going to make a tremendous amount of noise. So rather than using a laser as my power sink here, I will do this. The other thing I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to get a metronome. You're probably saying there, oh, I see what you did there. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this into here. So when I activate the metronome, it'll cause the particle accelerator to go pachoo. Obviously, there's no electricity coming into this thing, so it's not going to do much yet. So, like I said, I'm not, not, not too worried about it. And one of the cool things is the modder actually made it so that if I trigger the red one, it's going to tell me what my energy in here right now is. Obviously, I'm producing no energy. It's zero kev, you know, kevins. This is how many kevins of power I produce. All right, I think everything's good to go. Now we just need to get our control rod set up. So the control rod is going to be pretty easy to do. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use a winch. So I'm freeze time again. Boop create myself a winch. What I'm going to do to this lovely winch here is I'm going to set its angle to be at minus 90 degrees. Now I know that's going to make it a little bit goofy looking for a second here. So I'll pause, unpause, delightful. So now I can go ahead and take this winch and I can go ahead and set it so that it's connected to the bottom of something. So what I'll use is I'll use a key input. Keys inputs are very, very simple to use. I'll go, um, actually, I'll put it up here, why not? So we're gonna need two keys. One's gonna be up, one's gonna be controlling the direction here. Very important that we have both options. So I'll grab the top one here and we'll set this to, uh, let's see here, change key. And we'll call it the I key, apply. And we'll set this one down here. We'll make this one uh, change key. We'll make this one the K key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this for propagation. That's gonna control our direction. The K is gonna turn it on and off. So let's make sure this thing is nice and frozen, which it is. Let's go ahead and I'll reactivate time. Whoa. Uh <laughs> you all knew that was going to happen. You didn't yell nearly loud enough to make me not do that. All right. The other problem I just realized is I've unfortunately got the wrong color wire coming out of the one at the bottom. So I have to fix that. Sorry, wire. You were incorrect. You needed to be a red wire. Cool. Now we unfreeze time. Let's see if it works. Perfect. Okay, so now we can control the ups and the downs. We just need to plug in a bunch of these uh, boron control rods directly into the bottom. So let's freeze time. Let's go ahead and uh, drag this to a nice safe spot. Grab one of my control rods and do it. So we're going to have to be at least three control rods high. We could even go higher if we had to. It's going to get into a high precision mode for a second here because I want this to be relatively safe. So rigid cable connection. Yes, I know you could use pins, but now sometimes I'm just old fashioned. I can't help myself. All right, so that's gonna grab onto that. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves another one of these. These are gonna be the world's least stable control rods. And we're gonna go stick you just like that. I mean, it's like, how many, how close can I make this? You get connected like that. You get connected like that. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and grab ourselves one more of those control rods. Good use of boron here. I don't know what else you use boron for, but this is fine. Zoom in a bit. This is literally as far as I can zoom in. So it's about as precise as this is going to get. Yeah, I know this is exactly like a millipixel gap between those two. But like I said, it's a control rod. It does not have to be fancy. All right, let's go ahead and uh, unfreeze time and let's test the theory. So I should be able to press K and it should come down. There we go. And I should be able to press K again. And it should be able to go I, K. And it's got to suck itself back up. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to uh, adjust the height of everything here because it looks like I'm not going to make it to the top of my reactor. Freeze time. Let's bring it up a little bit higher. That looks pretty good. Let's just confirm that I didn't accidentally here. Going down, going down. Oh, it's got a bit of a wave to it. I don't know how, how safe I feel about that. All right. So my control rod is ready to rock. 
<laughs> that seems very legitimately not safe. Stop. And it looks like it bottoms out at the top too, which is good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, duplicate this. Oh, so we have a second one of these. Let's grab this, freeze time, control C, control V. Whoa, I've done that about a million times in this program. Uh, there we go. Now we're just gonna connect our appropriate cable so that everything works fine. Uh, unfreeze time again, and let's see if it works. So I need to press the I, K, and K. Uh-oh. <laughs> you see what I did, right? I forgot to connect the other table. Ah, it's a good thing we caught it now and not like when we fired up the reactor because that could have been really bad. All right, I, K. And stop. Because if you look really, really carefully, it's very obvious that I'm about to smack into that right now. So um, this is not quite ready for prime time, as I like to say. Grab this sucker. We're going to move it to the right just a teeny bit. Let's go ahead and uh, unfreeze time again. That's better. And it's got a bit of a whip whip to it, but we'll fix that in a second. Come back up. And clunk. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to design a simple system that's going to keep it in place when we use it. Because you see how it's kind of wobbling back and forth, which is, I mean, it's entertaining and terrifying at the same time. So what we'll do is we'll grab a brick. <laughs> Does it not have to be complicated? Actually, we'll make it, a, yeah, we'll be a little more careful. Let's actually use concrete. So what I'm doing is I'm just designing like a little kind of a shaft that I can kind of ride through here. Grab those three and we're going to go ahead and freeze each one of those. Freeze. I'm actually going to need a fourth one is how this is probably going to go. So let's go ahead and unpause. Let's wait for this to set. Oop, too much. Pause. See how it's basically straight now? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount this here. Mount this one right here. And that should act as a way to kind of control the direction in which it travels here. Let's go ahead and make a copy. Let's go ahead and paste. We're going to need another one of these. We don't know how it's going to settle yet, though. How you got to settle? Right there. Okay, that's going to be your choice. We're going to go ahead and lock that in place one more time. Everything looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and reverse test. Keep in mind, if we mess this up, bad things are going to happen. Oh, that's dangerous. See how that actually comes underneath? So when I retract this, there's a chance I'm going to clip the lip here. And that's exactly not what you want to happen when a control rod retracts. Uh oh. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. Give it a few moments to actually go ahead and uh, finish its retraction. Then we'll try slamming it back in again. And we'll see what happens. Looks good, looks good. Again, this is people play ground with with here. Look at that. Nice. So now we have our reactor control rods. We have the reactor itself. Now it's a matter of attaching the core. Nice. Let's begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the standard fuel first. Uh, that's just simple. So we have basic uh, low enrichment uranium. Go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these, which should be more than enough to kind of get us going here. So I'm going to go ahead and I grab this one. I'm going to place this one here. I'm going to place this one right here. We're not going to use that uh, low power stuff. That's no fun to hang on. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab this one. Pop this one right here. I love how the fact there's no roof on a nuclear reactor. That seems legit. Hopefully it doesn't rain. That could probably cause issues. All right, grab these here. Delete that one. We're going to go grab these three. Just kind of pop this in. Looks good. And we'll go wire everybody up in a second here. So that thermally they are talking to each other, if that makes sense. That looks pretty good right there. You could definitely pack everything a lot tighter if we wanted to. I just I don't feel the need. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect them to the middle like that. And now we're going to connect them to our thermometer. And we'll go ahead and connect them to our power generator in a minute once we see what happens. Um, yes, I did not put the uh, control rods down like an idiot, but oh well. On freeze. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we have criticality. I can tell you that right now because we're looking at 350 degrees. We're actually looking like overheating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the control rods a little bit here. And you can see that it immediately slows the reaction down significantly. Matter of fact, I'm going to take my control rods. I'm going to shove them almost all the way down. So that's going to slow that process down drastically. Keep in mind, they can still talk to each other vertically. So um, that's only going to be partially effective here. So now that we know that we can achieve criticality on the reactor, let's go ahead and pop the reactor control rods out again. And I'm going to be very interested to see how bad it's going to get. Let's go ahead and kill that. Flip the direction. We'll probably pull them up a little higher. There we go. Cool. 
It's about 500. Uh, remember, our fuel will explode. It should normally melt out the floor, but it will explode at about 5,000 degrees. So we're we're pretty critical here. That's uh, that's, that's pretty hot. That's uh, definitely running away on itself there. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this will overheat. So I'm going to go ahead and jam the control rods back in position. Look at how little you need to stick them in to slow things down. What about this far? Look at that. It's just so incredible how you could just stick these things in and have that much of an impact on the performance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'll bring the control rods all the way down. Everything's going to cool off, and we're going to go ahead and connect this uh, over here to our power generating side of things and see how we do. So we'll go ahead and grab our little thermal pipe grab this core, which is obviously quite hot, put that right there. You can see that just in the leftover heat here, I'm producing 580. But the thing we're really interested in is how much is going to come out of our particle accelerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate our metronome. Uh, one thing I will do, though, is I'll mute it so that you don't have to listen to it. Let's go ahead and grab the mute tool. Mute power. Click. Ah. So now that I've muted it, you can take a look down here and see its exact kev. So we're at 77 kevs, which isn't too bad. Uh, keep in mind, our reactor isn't even on right now, so uh, that, that, that's not bad. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start withdrawing the control rods here. Whoa. Pause right there. So I can see as soon as I pull those things out, we start getting really, really, really warm. We're not over 100 degrees or anything like that. Pull that a little bit further. Starting to get critical. Uh, that's with the little blow, uh, blue glow right there. Uh, looking good. About 70. You're still not producing oodles and oodles here, but that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and pull it out the rest of the way. Delightful. So now you can watch as uh, each time this ticks, um, the amount of electricity that this has is slowly increasing. You're also noticing that you know thermally, now that we have an electrical load on it, it kind of takes the edge off of things a little bit. You know, I'm still climbing in power very, very quickly, but I have everything completely in control. You know, I'm not overheating in any way. My core is actually a pretty good temperature right now. Um, I'm producing a pretty good amount of these kevs here, so nothing really. We're doing really, really well. This is actually a really, really solid reactor. Like I said, we're kind of topping out. It's not out of control and nothing bad's happening. So you can see that taking the knowledge we learned from last time, mixing it up in this one gives us something that is a little bit more functional that we can actually benefit from. And obviously in the real world, we'd be measuring like our megawatts over here, but this is a fairly decent measurement as well. So now you're probably saying, well, this has all been really, really fun and, you know, slightly entertaining. I mean, you've got some good stuff going on here. Keep in mind in the real world, they're actively cooled. We basically have water that we can cycle through it. We take the water, we run turbines with big steam compressions and everything like that. You're probably familiar with some of those concepts. It's just neat to see the chemistry sort of thing, so to speak. So um, what's going to happen if we use a fuel that we're not supposed to be using? Well, we're going to have issues. And uh, the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want this reactor to go so critical it's going to blow up in my face. We're at 1,000 degrees. If I had to guess, I'm going to say this will probably tap out somewhere around 16, 1,700 if, like I said, if I had to put a rough estimate on it. I can already see them in 160 kevs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade out the reactor core real quickly with something really, really dangerous. Now, for this experiment, I didn't even bother uh, unpausing, and I put the control rods in the correct position. So we have grabbed the most ridiculous radioactive activatable fuel ever. If you think about radiation, this thing will basically jump up to 30,000 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, unpause. And you put... Well, I hope it was worth the noise. Woo! This is really fun to look at, too. <laughs> look at how hot the world is! Oh my gosh! <laughs> So, um, as I had warned previously, that is a fantastically, oh my gosh, pause time. That is a fantastically impossible to utilize fuel. There's simply no way that you can keep it cool enough to extract any energy out of it. So as you notice, it, it immediately went critical. And um, I've, I've done some damage to this map before. I don't remember the last time I literally heated the entire map over a thousand degrees. Like, I don't know, I feel like that, that's a bit of an achievement on my part, in my opinion. But it also goes to show you to kind of the level of uh, potency that particular stuff has. So the last thing we're going to take a look at here is this fuel right here. Now, you've noticed before I mentioned that we have a really, really, really efficient fuel here, but we can't do anything with it on account of the fact that the fuel itself, actually the fuel itself is overheating at the moment. The reason we can't do much with this is because it doesn't really like to light off on itself. So how do we fix that? Well, let's, let's clean this mess up real fast. 
So you can see I've built myself a really, really, really basic little pile here with just using this uh, basically pretty depleted uranium goodness here. So the trick to get this stuff to light is to provide it with enough neutrons to get the process going. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab this one right out of the middle. Actually, we'll leave that one alone because that one's my uh, thermal sensor. We'll go ahead and pop this one out and we'll replace it with something that's a little bit more radioactive. Pop that right in there in the middle like that. Go ahead and let it rip. And we can see that this immediately goes critical and starts to light this fuel off almost immediately. So even though that this is normally extremely limited, it doesn't stop it from absorbing all of this neutrons enough to actually kind of kick the whole process off where you can actually get this whole system to actually light up even though we have significantly depleted fuel here. Now there's one more thing that's worth discussing here and that did the person who designed this system take into account operating in environments other than working in air. And the fact is, yes, they actually did. Um, if you were to build the entire reactor underwater, you would find that with those extreme fuels, it's actually quite a bit safer. Even much so that if I could take this one real quickly right here, you can see it's already quite radioactive. I'll go ahead and park one right next to it. And you can see that the water acts as its own moderator, just like it does in a real reactor, which I think is kind of a nice touch. So if I grab, remember this is the fuel that exploded instantly. So if I actually grab a heat pipe here and plug it into here, you can see that I'm only at 1300 degrees. That's it. So the most lethal and dangerous fuel, uh, just by introducing a new variable, which is a slightly alternate environment, makes it that much more controllable. As a matter of fact, if I really got a little excessive here, Ooh, it's got to burn your eyeballs if you're on a cell phone screen right now. Let's see, it's 5,000 degrees. Let's drop one more and one more. There we go. So that's uh, 7,200 degrees Celsius, but it's a completely controllable. Well, I say completely controllable, maybe it's not. A completely controllable reaction because I've introduced it into an environment other than an air-cooled one. So hopefully the series was interesting. Like I said, I just thought I'd do something just a little bit different, you know, kind of show off, you know, some of the other kind of neat things going on out there. And I did it without irradiating anyone, which was uh, pretty impressive on this part. By the way, if you want to have just a little bit of fun with this, watch this. <laughs> I would say it's pretty lethal if uh, that's the distance. Of course, if I take this and drop it right on the top, let's see here, radiation, oh, 64. Oh yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd be cooked. So of course what we could do is we could bring this thing over that little pool of water over there and see what happens. Yeah, I wonder what's gonna happen if we do that. Hmm, <laughs> look at how bright it is. So it's already at, at this distance, it's at 26. Wow, 1420, 80,000, 127,000. This stuff's pretty cool, enjoy.